Hi, I'm John Batham. We're talking today with Brad Silberling, who started his directing career with NYPD Blue and L.A. Law. His first feature was 1995's Casper, and since then he's gone on to direct films like City of Angels with Meg Ryan and Nicolas Cage, Moonlight Mile with Susan Sarandon and Dustin Hoffman. He's been an executive producer on Dynasty, Charmed, and a show he created, Jane the Virgin. Brad, many new directors are intimidated by actors that they're working with. And too often those actors don't trust us because they've had such bad experiences with unskilled directors who don't know how to talk to them. What are some techniques that you use to build trust with your cast? I call it the chain of trust. Um, and for me, the chain of trust that happens between a director and an actor, I think has to start outside of the Coliseum. It has to start off the stage because if you think about it from the moment the second AD says we're ready for you they're trotted in like incredibly precious gems it's a very awkward place for an actor to come onto a stage and not to have to sort of play a role before they play the role so what I always subscribed to from the time I got going I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do it but was to try to start dialogue again off stage to try to start it out of the spotlight to try to engender trust through dialogue you know if I walked on the set the first time and I was crossing and I got to meet one of the actors I would be brazen enough to say you guys work such long hours and you're crazy if you have a long lighting setup at some point tomorrow while this director's doing his thing do you mind if i bring you a cup of coffee can we can we just sit for a second you probably want to sit outside your trailer because you're sick of being inside let's just sit in the sun for a few minutes if, if you're good <laughs> i'm a big one for invading the hair and makeup trailer in the morning i i find that and my wife is an actor and i find that it's this interesting transition moment for them they're at their most vulnerable they're not made up they've just come from having maybe a a good or a bad night's sleep they might be very worried about the vulnerability of the part they're playing that day they may not be so sure about the script for that the scenes that day so i find if i can go and be an early handhold say good morning and just without seeming forced start to talk about the work we're gonna do that day, especially if I know that they're a bit unsure about it, or if they're insecure, if it's a love scene, if it's a stunt, if it's against something that has been disputed in its writing, I'll try to start that calmness so that then when we walk on the stage together, we're ahead of the game. You know, I've been, I've been mad at you for a lot of years because you didn't tell me that sooner. <laughs> Brad, I remember you talked to me once about how you like to use casting sessions as mini rehearsals and another way to build trust with your actors. I would find myself in those earliest episodes I did um, in casting and doing work, turn, turning these into workshop moments as opposed to just actor walks in, runs through the scene, no adjustments, thank you for coming in and making strange judgments it just didn't make sense to me i also wanted to kind of see how flexible an actor might be it may not be that it was going to be the story we were going to tell but i wanted to see what if what if i took them over here what if i wanted to take them there how pliable are they and so i really would begin to work with them a bit and then i realized once i got in to shooting these you know eight seven day shows these day players are again guest stars coming in we didn't have the time while well, the taxi meter was running to to do that good work and so what i realized was i would tell the casting directors please can you space out your your calls for these auditions because i'm going to work a bit uh and it's selfish on my part a i want to find how pliable the actor is if if it's somebody who's strong I actually want to do some of the work i want to have time to do on the day with them and I want them to feel super secure about the choices that we've discovered together. So that then on the day, it's just about calming them down, making them sure that they're in the right place and that they were the one who got that job and to bring them back as quickly as possible to the, to the adjustments that we made, the, the sort of strategies we came up with in the audition room. 
can you talk about how you'd like to give notes to the actors? Um, I can't take credit for actually even having read the whole book, but I remember one night, this is years ago, um, my wife was reading this fantastic book that the coach of the bulls, and he said in his book, listen, I'm not teaching them fundamentals. These are incredible athletes. I'm there to help try to orchestrate, hopefully really inventive play using the tools of these incredible athletes. And I remember that really stayed with me because there's many moments where directors can suddenly forget that they, hopefully they've, if they've cast well, you, you have incredible instruments at your hand. So what I have over time come to do when it comes time to direct in the moment to direct is I try to, to come up with a very playable choice, which usually means it is an action. It's got, there, there is an intent, um, there's a result, yes, but the idea is that this is a specific strategy this character is choosing in this moment to get their uh, objective. It's, it's going back to the core ideas. So that there's no sense of judgment about a choice that just went down in take one. It's not ooh, 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 that, that, the. Uh. It's, it's more trying to draw them in as basically as storytelling partners. And what that means is I trust that they can go anywhere. And so I posit an action in, in the manner of, hey, what if, let's try something. What if she decided to charm him even as she was slipping the knife in his back? What if she decided to go a whole other way? Would, would that be interesting? Let's try that. What if, what if? So it's what if. It's like storytelling. It's like telling a story with each other. I take for granted A, which is maybe manipulative, but I take for granted that they'll want to play along. I take for granted that they have the skills to do it. I'm not judging a choice they made before. I'm reminding them that Every take is a choice. Hey, let's, what if we go this way? Um, and so I try to take it again away from any choices that they've made and more about storytelling. I directed Ben Kingsley for the first time three years ago. It was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life because he, that's what I felt every, in, in every scene. It was, it was almost a one man film. It was a chamber piece. It was two actors and he, it was having a storytelling partner because I knew that he could go anywhere. Um, and he was very kind. He said to me, no note is wrong. If you just literally need me to turn the metronome up, I will turn the metronome up, <laughs> meaning pace and speed. Um, but that's what I found was that it was about engaging them in a, in a what if with an action and, and a, the objective, as long as we're all telling the same story, the objective is not going to change. We know where that person needs to be by the end of the scene, but maybe there's a much more unexpected way for them to attack it. And I trust that they'll have the skill. If I if I do say that, yeah, it's like, wow, let's let's seduce our way into not getting that ticket, or let's intimidate beyond her skill set. If her biggest if her biggest fear is she's completely unintimidating you know what, let her go for it. Try to intimidate the hell out of this principal because you're afraid your son's gonna get kicked out of school. What if we did this? Or it could even be small gestural things. It's like, can we try something? This sounds crazy, but can you do me a favor? Let's see, let's see what happens. That's often a phrase. Let's see what happens if you literally never break eye contact. Let's see what happens if that intimidates him in a way that nothing else you could imagine would do. Try that. I know it's crazy. Let's see what happens. So this is <laughs> often these days how I try to do it is to engage them as storytelling partners with an action. I think sometimes we, we think of it as pitching an idea to the actor. And, and yes, what if? Uh, it's okay. No judgment on what we did before. But let's pitch. Now, how does that contrast in your view with with what what used to be called or still is called result directing you know it's sort of that great thing you can't play a tone <laughs> it's like you can't play a tone and the, the problem with a result is just you know be angry well okay but there's so many flavors of that and and in this moment 
what am I still trying to achieve? So the, the results are the lack of imagination from our brethren. And, and we've all been there where you're just, all you're seeing is a result. You're seeing a quality you want to see on screen from this actor and you don't know how to get it. And the danger is just, it's like saying, be funny, you know, um, or, ooh, ah, just, just do it better. It's, it's, it's just horrible versions of, of the result. And the result is that it's like an imagination gap. It's just asking them to play a finished quality as opposed to the life that would, would reveal that, that anger or that shyness or that embarrassment. Again, these qualities, but to not give them something to play is to, again, hang them out to dry. So I think that's where, again, trying to give somebody a strategy that's very playable um, and actually sells the story of, of that scene in a funny and unexpected way or a really frightening and unexpected way. But there is still something that they're, there's a route. You're giving them a map. And you're saying you're a fantastic driver. Go go see where this route takes you. But you're not just saying, go be in, you know, don't go be in Des Moines. I, how did I get to Des Moines? I don't know. So it's like you don't want to just give them that that flat result. Uh, as you were talking, I was thinking about an example of when you said be angry, and in a better version would be punish the other guy. Correct. Correct. Exactly. That's Suddenly, a much easier, much easier way for them to work. That's right. Exactly right. And often you nailed it, which is if you, we all get tired or we get impatient, but if you stop and work backwards from the result, you can find that action, that, that, that verb, that playable choice and hand that to them. Um, you know, even if it's, even if it's, it's funny, if there's, I, I go back to I, when I was making my graduate thesis film, I had a pace issue with an actor who was supposed to be leaving a phone message and he just was sort of chewing the scenery and taking too much time. And I had an instinct even then. And I remember saying to him, um, okay, you've been burned three times this week by women you were pursuing and they all had very short answering machine messages. So again, it oddly enough was, oh, okay, I, I have a goal. I gotta make sure I get my, my little Lothario message out, but I gotta do it quickly. But instead of just saying go faster, it still made it more specific. It was somewhat more desperate because he didn't wanna get cut off. So I just gave him some backstory to, to feed him, to frankly make him, go, <laughs> to make him go faster, but hopefully it would be more dimensional than just saying go faster. Well, Brad, both those ideas are great advice for any director, new or veteran. Hey, thanks so much for taking time to share with us. You can read more from Brad Silberling in John Badham on directing.